Hello everyone, Kerry the Crafter here, that's C-E-R-I, The Crafter. And I'm here with April 2023's Colour Combo Experiment. Let's call it that, because I don't like the word challenge and I'm still trying to find the word that works for me. So this month's combo, I cannot say it's going to be a favourite of mine, and guess why? It contains pink. I'm not a pink person. Love her music. Paint colour, however, is a whole other thing. Right, so I've got two shades of pink and I'm taking a bit of a liberty. I'm adding permanent magenta as well because these are just too pale and I need to be able to colour them up. My argument is that's a kind of pink anyway. So it's pink and orange. So I've got orange here and I pulled in terracotta because terracotta is definitely the same family as orange and I might want to use that. Now, with the, with the guidelines, because I don't like calling them rules either, with the guidelines of the challenge or the experiment or whatever you call it, you're allowed to add white, you're allowed to add black, and I'm going to add metallic, you're allowed to add a metallic, I'm going to add metallic um, green. Oh, that's a heck of a mess on there. Give me one second. So anyway, as you can see, it's, it's a nice green metallic, and for what I've got in mind, um, I think it's going to work. So um, I got my 12 by 12 out because as you know I like to make backgrounds. If I if I make a 12 by 12 I always have the option of cutting it down to 12 by 9 for a journal cover and then the strip I cut off can become a pocket on the inside of the cover and as I make journals as well and I'm trying to restock my journal covers at the moment that's a good move. I have my 5x7 which I use as my palette because I'm notoriously bad for putting too much paint on here. My four inch speedball bray. I was going to order a new one of these, wasn't I? Or a spare one. I haven't got round to doing it. I need to give this a really good soak. Well loved, but there's a reason for that because it's a good bit of kit. And there'll be other things we use as we go along. Now, I've decided I'm going to use a couple of stencils in this one. And I'm going to keep this quite simple and classic, or that's my view anyway. So I'm going to use one of PM Artist Studios stencils which is um, Cross, Craftsman Square Lattice. I believe Brad designed this one for PM Artist Studio. Um, Brad is actually, there's P which is Patricia, M which is Mariah and then the hidden element is the B which is Brad who's Mariah's husband and then there's a little Izzy in, the, in there as well. So anyway I'm going to use that because I want something quite formal I'm feeling. Then you've seen me use this before. It's my rose bouquet. I'm going to use the 8x10 version, I think this one is. But it doesn't matter which of the three. I think there's a 9x12, an 8x10, and an 8x7. No, a 5x7. I'm going to use this because I'm going to use elements from within it. So, first of all, I want to put a background down. Now, I'm actually thinking I'm going to use this matte um, pink here. I was going to use pearl. No, I think I'm going to use this matte pink. I'll use the pearl for something else. So I'm going to load up my plate. Now, I'm putting this directly on the plate at this point because this is literally just giving me a background coating um, for my 12x12. 12 12. And I've got an, a spare 12x12 12 12 to do any cleanup stuff on as well. So it's all going to be good and done. Well, we've got really bright sunshine, as you've just seen it blast through the window here. Um, keeps coming and going so if, if the quality of the video lighting changes I do apologize there are some things I just cannot control and one of them is the weather if I could control the weather believe me I'd be a multi-billionaire because the world would want me to control weather all over the flipping planet so right, there you go there's something stuck to my brain which I'll sort out in a minute so let's just pop this one down now, I always end up with slightly white edges, um, purely because I've had this 12 by 12 plate a very long time. In fact, I've had most of my plates a very long time, and I found over time they've, they've sort of gone slightly out of shape, so I will have little white areas. That's fine. I'm just going to come in and pick up any paint on edges I can find and make sure that I've got a nice coating on it. There you go. It's a very matte looking coating. And that actually goes really well with what I want. So let's put that to one side. Oops, just noticed another little bit. Run the back along there. And what was on this brayer? There's a little something there. 
little something there. So I'll bray this out a bit just to get it moving off my plate. I don't expect to pick anything up with it, um, but I do want it gone. So pink and orange, and um, this was requested colour combination by one of my subscribers. Can I remember the name? No, not in the slightest. Sorry about that. I did have a list and then I lost the list. Yeah, I'll find it one day. It will have fallen off a shelf, fallen behind a cupboard or dropped into a drawer. I'll probably find it in a few years time and go, what was this list for? That's the story of my life. Me and my lists. There's lists everywhere. There's absolutely lists everywhere. So... Right, um, this by the way, if you'd, you saw me using it, it's called a Baron. Um, this one was made by someone called Anthony at Cody Woodcraft on Etsy. I like it because it's big, it's got some weight to it, because I was finding previously, using my hand all the time, dried out my hands and they would start cracking, and I was finding I was having wrist problems while I was pressing down. This has got a nice weight to it, so see me using this, it's called a Baron, B-A-R-E-N, I believe it's spelled. So, right, so I've got my pink down here, and it is a very flat pink, and there's kind of a reason I wanted it to be a flat pink. Now, I'm wondering whether I want it introduced. Introduced? What the heck is introduced? Um, just a bit of something into this. Just, just a hint of something. So I'm going to get some of that magenta. I just want a bit of dynamic in it. And you'll see what I mean, it's just the tiniest bit. And I'm actually going to use the same colour that I had on the back. Is this the one I used? I didn't notice the top was that messy. That probably explains where the crumbs came from on my brayer. So I'm literally going to mix it up a bit on my brayer. And I'm going to paint with my brayer in that I'm just going to flick it down areas. just to give it a little bit of something in the background. So let's pop this little little one down again and pick that up. And then I'll probably get the other sheet out and just do something similar with it, just to clean it up. Um, there is an advantage to doing two 12 by 12s at the same time. And that is that if I'm doing a journal cover out of it, then that gives me an inside to the journal cover that is the same color as the outside. There you go, that's what I was looking for. I wanted something a bit painty wally. Yeah, that's a technical term, that painty wally. So, right, stick a bit of this down. Just a little bit on there. Just to actually get that, get that off there. Um, there are times when I don't use my Baron, by the way. I should be using it now, to be honest. I don't know why I didn't use it. And that is when I'm using a softer paper or a tissue and I'm trying to get down into a stencil to pick up paint, I will then use my hands on my fingertips to push the paper down. So just know you'll see me doing a combination. Ooh, that's looking nice. Let's get rid of these white edges. Well, we've got the ability to get rid of them in the same color palette. I want that bit off there. So you all seem to be having great fun with this color combo experiment. So I'm still struggling with what to call it, as I said. Um, I think it's a great way to build up your colour knowledge. For me, it's been great in that it makes me get away from... See, that's lovely. Okay, just divert for a second. So if that was the inside of the journal and that's the outside of the journal, you can now see they work as a family together. Um, yes, yeah, so as I was saying, for me, the colour combo experiment has actually been about pushing me outside my comfort zone and making me use colours I wouldn't normally use. So there you go, that's how that worked. So right, next thing I want to do is I want to come in and I want to put down um, a colour that's darker. I, want to, I was going to do the orange, wasn't I? Yes, I want to go down with something darker that I can pull up through this. But again, I don't want it all over. So I'm just going to put this down, lift the stencil up, and then pick up, and I might have to do it one or two times. Now I've got these two different oranges. This one's quite a bright orange. This is 
quite a flat orange. It's almost a chalky sort of feel. I might try this. It, the reason I'm trying this one is because it it dries really quickly and therefore I may not get to pick up perfect impressions of the colour which will be a benefit for me because I, I don't want the design all over. So I'm just loading my brayer up a bit just coming in. I have a little bit extra paint than I would normally have because the paint has to go down into the stencil. I do love this stencil Brad but then you know me and geometrics and straight lines and organized this just this just absolutely plays to my my everything i'm busily working on my designs for let's see i think it'll be either may or june the designs i'm working on at the moment they will they will launch for pm artist studio and i'm going to work on some unique um foam stamp designs which is probably going to terrify Patricia um, because I want to create a collection of them. Pop that up there. Um, and she knows nothing about that now. So Mariah, if you're watching this, ha ha. So right now I'm being a little cautious in that I want to make sure it's being picked up vertically and horizontally. because I don't want it to just be a bit hodgepodge on here. I would like it to be as straight as I can. So that's all that needs. Don't want any more on there. I will, however, come in with this one and pick up big swathes of it. No problem there whatsoever. Quite happy to do that. And what I might do is so I've got a complete, a complete pattern is take up anything that's left on the brayer and reapply. Take that off there a second because this will be lighter but as you can see there's a band down the edge of this that needs a bit of help. So let's pick that up on there, pick that up on there to make it a bit across the bottom of there. Um, as I said this is a cleanup. this is not meant to be the art piece. Um, there's always a benefit, as I said, if it comes out lovely and you've got um, an inside and an outside. And I quite like that. I would probably say that's pretty much done as far as an inside goes, because the feature is actually the outside of the journal cover. So that might go to one side. We'll see. I might pick up other stuff on it. Now, there's a little bit on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab... Grab this one, which is a bit of nothingness, really. I'm just going to rub it on there just to remove any excess paint from the surface of the stencil. There you go. Very little on there at all. I don't tend to wash my stencils or clean them um, unless they've got very small apertures. If they've got small apertures, then yes, I'll come in and clean them. And I'll then clean them immediately after using them by putting them in a, in a tray of water. Sometimes it's warm water, though I never really bothered about that. And sometimes it has a little bit of washing detergent in it. And that's kind of just me being me. Okay, that's that's just building up something. So now let's take that out of there. Sticking very nicely to the plate. So that's, that's almost, well, it's dry to the touch, but it's not dry to put by. So let me just, I'm going to use a slightly damp cloth. I use damp cloths, I don't use baby wipes, unless it's a job that a baby wipe is the absolute perfect thing for. I do sometimes use baby wipes to clean up ink and then use those baby wipes later on. Sometimes I'll use a baby wipe to smear um, paint onto an art journal page background, but not very often. I, I found that um, I can buy two of these face cloths for a dollar or a pound in my local store and they last me easily a year and I throw them in with my laundry as I normally do with my coloured wash and to be honest with you even after a year I could continue to uh, use them they get stained they get dirty but they get washed I mean it's not like it's a fashion accessory is it uh, a little bit of kitchen paper just to wipe my hands because I'm feeling a bit sticky so right so where are we up to? Let's take a look. 
So we have this going on as our background. I'm not sure that there's an orientation and it doesn't bother me that there is or is not an orientation. Yes, I'm okay with that. Now, whoops, don't drop it. Now what I want to do now is I want to come in with my rose bouquet design. Now I'm going to work in one side and then probably come across and work on the other side as well. And what I want to do is I'm going to sponge through this onto my plate. Now when I pick this up, I'm probably going to have to pick it up with pink again. So I'm going to be a little bit careful. Or should I do it directly onto the print? Oh, that's a thought. Let's do it directly onto the print. Why am I doing it here to pick it up when I can just put it straight down? Okay, thank you for that feedback, people. I didn't think that through. There may be another layer of something to go to the top anyway. Right, so let's pull in the piece I'm going to work with. Now, I don't like that line there, so I need to make sure that I do something with that. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some of the permanent magenta Oh, if I can open it up again, onto my plate. I'm going to take a little bit of the pink that is in the background onto the plate. And I'm going to take some of the white onto the plate. Now, there will also be green involved in this, but I'm going to deal with that. How am I going to deal with that? Let's put it on here, the work surface itself. That's probably why this gets stained so much. So, um, Thank you for all the hints and tips on cleaning this. I've tried a few out. Um, some don't work for me, some do work for me. Um, probably the most successful, funnily enough, was toothpaste, which I was like, what? So you know, I'm going to come in, I'm going to take a little bit of this on my sponge. And are we in shot? We are in shot. And I'm going to come in and just do the center of some of these roses. Now I'm not planning to do the whole bouquet as you see it here. I'm going to change it as we go along. That sponge is almost dry now so I'm going to pick up some of the lighter color and I'm going to work my way around the outside and what this will do is it will blend the pale color over the back of the darker colour. It will also pick it up and carry it around slightly. I'm okay with that. Let's just pick up a little bit more for this last rose down here because it's a larger rose. I'm trying to avoid going over onto the leaves but to be honest I'm not hugely worried. Now we're not looking for a knock your socks off bright pink rose here. I'm looking for subtlety and that's why I pulled the white in. Because what I want to do now is I'm going to come in with the white, a little bit of white on the back of my sponge, and I'm then going to go over the whole rows. And what this does, I've done this backwards, haven't I? Okay, people, ignore everything I've just said, because I had it in my mind that I was doing this on a plate. We need to do the reverse of this. Okay, Kerry messes up. That's fine. It's a whole new video, people. So I'm going to come in with white first. <laughs> See, I had my mindset that I was going to pick it up on the gel plate where you, when you're working on a gel plate and you're pulling a print, you have to work in reverse. So obviously, if I'd have pulled them, the dark pink would have been the center of the roses and the white would have been the background. But because I'm sponging it, numpty Kerry got it backwards, I now have to start again and I have to put the background in and then build the pink on top of it. So... See, things happen. It's when you're doing a video, I must admit, one of the things I hear from quite a few video um, influence, influencers and artists is the hardest bit is to actually keep on talking and have a logical stream of verbal coming out. Do you know what I mean? It's, and it's hard. So I'm just coming in and I'm just tapping around. I'm not bothering to go all the way to the edge of the white. I'm just putting some color in here because I'm looking for subtlety. Yep, you heard it here first, Kerry, is going subtle. Well, as subtle as I get anyway. 
Right, once I put some of that on, now with some of the paints, you're going to find it's going to give little, little air bubbles as you tap it down. I actually like that. It gives me a slight bit of texture um, and they pop normally anyway. Right, I've got a little bit of the darker here. I'm just going to tap the darker into the centre of the roses or the roses I'm creating anyway. And then I'm going to take a sponge. I'll use the white one on this, but not with white paint. And I'm just going to go in a slight circle and this will blend out that edge. At the moment you're all looking going, what the heck is he doing? Don't worry, it'll work out in the end. Now I'm going to pick up another bit of sponge. I'm cutting my sponges in half at this point. Um, these sponges, by the way, um, this was actually packaging, I think, from when the workmen um, did our kitchen. And I think the taps came, came in this lovely big block of foam. And I went, you're not throwing that out, are you? And that was no good to anyone. Well, it is to me. So I'm just going to bring in some leaves. And this is where my metallic will come in. Now, again, I'm using a little bit of paint on my sponge. And I'm doing that because I don't want a heavy, heavy leaf. I don't mind if it's almost like a shimmer in the background. I'm also not doing every leaf. I'm doing leaves that, in, that are in relationship to the roses that I've actually used. Now, I do know I've probably squeezed out far too much paint, so I'm probably going to do a quick making some more backgrounds when, when I've done this. I'm certainly not going to waste paint. Now, I could come in here with a darker green or something to shade those up, but I'm not going to because I'm not supposed to be using green other than the metallic. So if I lift this off now, as you can see, I've got real subtlety in there. So I'm going to come in and I'm now going to put this back down in another angle. And I'm going to repeat the whole process. So hopefully it's not boring for you guys and hopefully I'm in shot. But I am going to come in and do exactly the same thing um, over on this side. Now what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to not use the same roses next to each other. So I know that this rose hasn't been used yet. These two roses have. And I don't mind that they're going off the page. To me that also adds interest. Um, these roses are subtle mind, they're not meant to be in your eyeball. In your eyeball, what the heck is that one I'm talking about? So, because of the colour of the background, obviously each rose will show up with a different intensity. I'm not going to do this one because it's just a little tiny bit. I'm going to come in, where's that pale pink gone? Pick up some of the pink. Put the pink into these as well. Now we have to remember the dominant colours are supposed to be pink and orange. So there's probably going to be something I'm going to put on as one of the final things on this to bring this into being um, more about orange and pink. I'm going to come in and put a little bit of that magenta in the middle of them. Actually, I might just work my way around with this sponge and so I'll blend them out just a little bit more. So I'd like to have had the centres a little darker than that, but I'm not stressing about it because it's art. Just blend that out. Um, you can get very, very clever blending with sponges. I, I love working with sponges on stuff like this. Right, before I move on. Yep, you got it. We've got to add some leaves. I've got way too much paint out here. So... Come in and get the leaves in here. Again, I'm using leaves that are next to the roses I've just printed. Printed one we're talking about that I've just painted. Um, because that's the way I want them. So there you go. So we've got some really subtlety here. Now I'm probably going to have to do individual roses at this point. Which kind of works for me. I'm trying not to put the stencil on wet paint, although that's probably dry by now. Can you still see me? You can still see me. So same process again, just gonna add this little rose in here. 
I'm going to put the white in. Once you get going with this, it does speed up, guys. Um, you'll also notice some of them I put the deep down and then some I come in and I put the light down first and I reverse it around. Part of that is because I want variety. Spice of life, I've been told. Spice of life. So just give myself a little bit of a blended edge there. Um, yeah, I can take both those leaves. Yeah, I was a little apprehensive about this colour scheme. I was like, ooh, I don't normally do. I love orange. Love orange, love yellow. Those are colours I'm quite happy with. See, we're just building up. I think I want one more in here. Looks a bit wallpapery to me, which also isn't a problem. I'm trying to work out which roses are which. Does it matter? Not hugely. I think I'm going to add that one in there because I quite like where the leaves are situated on this one. Right, let's move that over just slightly. Sorry, mumbling to myself here, guys. Apologies. I'm wondering, I wasn't gonna use any sort of stamps on this. I was just gonna let it be the roses, but I'm thinking that maybe it might be quite nice to add one of those PM Artist Studios um, butterfly stamps that they've got now because I've got two of them. I think I've got the, the monarch and the swallowtail maybe. I'm trying to memorize them without actually seeing them. Right, so I'm going to pull in this leaf. I'll put in this leaf. Let's take that off there. Okay, so we're getting there. I think I'd like to add the odd leaf now. Just, just because I can. I think I just want to add little bits of leaves just so that it fills in a little bit more. Now I've used no black and I've only used a hint of white so far. So I'm fairly okay with all of that. I think this rose here needs another leaf near it. Playing a dangerous game here, laying a stencil over wet paint. I think we're getting away with it. Okay, I've got other things I know I need to do. This line is gonna really, really, really annoy me unless I do something about it. If I put a rose onto it, I can probably annihilate most of it. Although I hadn't planned on adding an extra rose there, but you know what? I was always told when I was a cake, cake decorator that if you have a mistake or something that wasn't planned for, should we say, like you've stuck your thumb in the side of the cake and you've made a mark or there's been a bit of colour dropped on it and you've got to do something. Um, I was always told that if you can't cover it up, then do something with it. So I've sort of got the kind of mantra now that is, if you can't conceal it, reveal it. So for me, that, that works all the time. I'm like, you know what? Just, just make the most of it. So right, so we put the rose in the middle. And I think if I come in with a couple of leaves along here, just be able to get the leaf where I need it. Just be able to break that line up. I don't mind a little tiny bit of the line. Have I done the right leaf there? Let's do that leaf as well because I quite like the angle that's on. Right. I think we've successfully concealed that enough. Right. Let's put that to one side for a second. Let's lift it up and get that off there. Right. So I've got all this on here. Where did I put the gel plate? I think we're just going to go a little bit bonkers here and I'm going to put this down and let's see what we've got as a clean up. I've got this one. It's probably not the perfect one for this. Let's get rid of those sponges and put them over there out of harm's way. I'm just going to pick up whatever paint is on here and just brayer it through. And yes, it's all badly mixed up on here. That does not bother me in the slightest. 
the aim of this is just basically to clean up the plate. Uh, not worried about the green. I can scoop that back in. I know that will be an easy fix. So come in, where's that piece? Right, actually, I wonder. Yeah, let's put it on this one. Let's just get rid of that a second. Only because if I did make this into the inside of a journal cover, then I could have the roses reaching from the front cover to the back cover. Can you get in there? Thank you. So, this is living for another day. There you go. So if this was the inside of a cover, I could fold the cover and then the roses would go through it. Subtle, but it's the inside of a cover. So right, I've got some stuff on there, got some stuff on there. Let's just pick pick up some stuff on here. As I said, this is just this might get cut up for ATCs, it might get Zen tangled on it, it might have a lot of things done to it. Who knows? I say Zen tangled, that's not the word I meant. I meant doodled on. So Okay, so that's just make it a green, green and pink is cool. I like that. Right, time to have a bit of a clean up around here. So, right, I think I've got all of the elements on there that I was thinking about using. So I think we need to take a little bit of a look at it and see what it needs. Now, it is way, way, way subtle at the moment. Okay, way subtle at the moment. When I started filming, there wasn't any sun, so I had no shadow down here. I'm hoping I can complete this before the shadow creeps across the screen and really starts to annoy me. So, right. Where is, is the one I'm working on? Right, this is looking quite lovely. I'm okay with this. I think I would like... It needs some dy dynamism. I can't say that word. Diamondism. Di there you go. Diamondism. Yes, that's the word I was looking for. It needs a pop. And I think I want to put some dots into it, not bubble wrap. What I'm going to use is I've got one of these sticky mats. Now, if you get these are like non-slip mats you get from your inexpensive stores. Now, if you look at these things, they have two surfaces. One is obviously what was the top surface when they made it, but then the underside is raised. So I tend to use this side to give myself dots and this side to give myself a checkered look. So just, just know that that's, that's kind of what goes on there. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to put down maybe a bit of the terracotta, because remember I said I wanted something that was here. I don't want a lot of this on here, though. I only want the odd little bit because I've got an idea of what I want to do with um, a more dramatic look. So I'm just going to put this face down, pick up and add just little bits of dots. Again, I'm using it to conceal areas that I'm not overly happy with um, because maybe they've got lines or there's just a section of them I don't quite like. And I think that's enough. Maybe just a little bit up in that corner to pull the eye up there. So see what I mean? It's just enough to get it moving. And we still have orange and we still have pink. The roses were only ever meant to be subtle and that's what they were there for. So let's see if I can pick this up with something. Let's get this ATC piece down. ATC, by the way, stands for Artist Trading Cards, if you're new to that term. An Artist Trading Card is a miniature piece of artwork that is two, and well, as far as I'm concerned, it's two and a half inches by three and a half inches, and it can be anything that fits within those dimensions, to be honest with you. And people will um, make them, and they will share them, they will trade them. Um, they will keep them. I know that Fran, um, what's Fran's last name? Baker. Fran, I think her name is Fran Baker. Yes, Fran Baker. That's right. Um, she basically makes them and keeps them. 
which is, <laughs> I think Fran is of the opinion, if I put that much effort into something, I'm going to keep it. And I'm like, no, blaming you for that at all. I, I tend to give away some of my best ones and I'm like, oh, I shouldn't have given that away. <laughs> but you know what? That's fine. Right. I think what I want to do, because I've been looking at this thinking, hmm. I want to put black onto this, which is no surprise there, obviously. Um, I'd like to put this design and then pulled it off so that only had the black lines. But I think the problem with that is that it will feel like you need to line it up with the ones that are on there. So I think what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to put black through it and then pick this pattern up in hopefully a couple of little areas. So I don't need to cover it completely. I just need a patch of it that can be lifted. So I'm going to use the mask black. Oh, Ooh, there's that thing again. I did contemplate um, using Payne's Grey, but I, I like my mask black. Okay, so as you can see, that's not a lot of paint. Um, and that's okay, I don't want it to be a lot of paint. This is this is just adding detail. This isn't this isn't meant to be a perfect anything. Lift that off. I do love this print. So I'm going to look at this now and I'm going to basically touch it down in areas just enough to pull up pieces and I want to put it in so that it's almost a ghosting over it and I'm trying to line it up as best I can but I am doing this upside down. Now this area I love but it's too orange for me and hopefully I'm not taking, well that's not bad, I, I can deal with that. I might want to put a little bit along that bottom edge. And a little bit over there, I think. Now, I don't want to be accused of missing the middle, so I think I've somehow I've got to get one little tiny bit right in there. Oh, that was too subtle, Griffiths. It's on an angle. That's going to very much annoy me. But you know what? It is what it is. Right. There you go. We're almost done with that one. Now, I've got this on the plate. Obviously, I'm going to pick it up with something. So I'm going to pick it up with the one that I said would potentially be the inside of the cover. I know black dries really quickly. So what this is achieving is not as much as you would think. There you go. Now, I've got all that on the plate. I've got this here. Can I reline that up, do you think? Did I turn this around when I lifted it off? I think I did. That's good enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put the rest of this on there and pick it up with that clean-off sheet. And as we all know, half the time our clean-off sheets end up our favourite pieces. But it gives me a chance just to get the excess paint off everything I've got on the go here. Remember guys, the, the stencils from PM Artist Studio are actually made from UPO. Um, UPO is quite a tough product, but if you abuse it, you're going to lose it. Okay, as with every single other stencil I've ever used, I mean some of those Mylar ones I've, I've destroyed more than I like to think. Okay, that's actually not looking bad. I think that's pretty much heading towards done. It was an unintentional make. As I said, it was lit. Well, you can see it's a clean up from several other things. I'm liking that. That that might be. I might consider that done. Right. So where are we up to? That's on here. This is on here. This needs to get off that brayer. Right. I think. I need to pick that up with something and I'm looking at here going I've got all that green paint there and I'm wondering whether I can brayer it out onto there and then pick it up maybe with some tissue paper and I, th I think tissue paper because I can then collage with it 
So I've got a bit of tissue baby here. It's about the width of that, so um God gave me fingers, there you go. Best tools we were we were given. There you go. You saw it here, free tools. So I'm right, just gonna braid this out a bit on here. Um, metallics for me are not the greatest pickup medium. Um but I would rather try and save all of this paint a little bit than throw it away. I don't mind cleaning up the plate afterwards. But in the meantime, if I can get something that I can use for a collage, I certainly will. Just bray that flat. And I can leave that sit for a few minutes while we're having a bit of a chat. Um, the tissue paper I'm using, by the way, is a water resistant tissue that I buy here in the UK and it's called Carnival Tissue Paper. Um, it is a little bit expensive. However, um, the volume you get of the tissue paper for the amount you pay, they're huge sheets. They're absolutely huge sheets. Um, when it arrived, I thought, if I ordered a body bag or something, uh, then what, what I did is I cut them into, I cut them into four? Actually, I cut them into half, and still that half is too big. So very often I can cut a 12 by 12 and still have enough for another plate out of the half. So if it's, say, I can't remember how many, re how many sheets it was. Say it was 300 sheets. Well, I'll end up with 600 sheets. Do you know what I mean? So for me, it was very much economical because the water-resistant tissue paper is less likely to tear than your normal gift wrap tissue paper. And I like that durability about it. Right, well that's thinking about itself. Let's think about this. Right, I am liking that. So not my color scheme. I'm thinking now, what do I want to add if anything? Thank you, Mr. Sunshine, that was lovely of you. Yeah. I do like this. Definitely see the orange, definitely see the pink. Can you see the pink? You can't see the pink. Um, I do want to put some detail into it. There's, there's something that's not, not there yet. Um, and I'm wondering whether I want to put some magenta butterflies into this. Maybe that will just be enough. Because I've got the magenta, it's part of what I was using anyway, so that wouldn't be cheating in any way. So let's put that to one side. Let's lift this up now. Yeah, it didn't lift well. It gives give me some subtlety. That's still on there. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this to one side because it's a clean up anyway. And after I finish the video, I'm going to put white on there or maybe an ivory or cream and pull it. And that'll just be another thing. Um, I'm not going to show you in the stream because it's it's a side effect of what I'm doing. So these are the two foam stamps from PM Artist Studio that I have. I believe this is called Swallowtail and this is called Monarch. And I love them. I don't use them for ink, although I've seen loads of people use them for ink. I tend to just use them for my acrylic paints. And what I do is once I've used it, I will, you've seen me using this damp cloth, I will sit them on a damp cloth face down so that then the moisture is keeping the paint soft so that when I stop filming I can go and give these a wash. These have got wonderfully little thin lines in them. I usually just use my thumb just to wipe them. Some people have said use a soft brush or a toothbrush. I've never had a problem. I just put them in a bowl of water and just rub them and come clean anyway. So I think, now the thing is I really like black. But I think magenta, because it's pink, and there is black on here, I don't want to overdo the black. I would like, quite like to put a little bit of white in here too. This is annoying me here, but to be honest, there's points at which I can't do anything about it. I'm wondering whether I want to add a little bit of white something. What's that white something going to be? I'm thinking some sort of mark making. Now I've got this other stamp. This is Doe Crafts 2003. They're 20 years old. There you go. That shows you. Um, that's the barcode that's on it anyway. Um, 
there, there are different versions of this and I quite like this one because it gives me blocks and I've got blocks within this and I think I'd like to add some white. Um, and I'm doing that basically I just want to give the eye some places to rest because I'm feeling this feels a little bit busy even for me. So I'm going to come in, pick it up on my stamp. Now I don't use these stamps for ink. I only use these for paint. So I'm going to immediately disguise the bit that I hate. That's lovely. That's that gone. There's a lot of black there for me. I'll turn this around because I like to turn stuff around. Down here bothers me. Now I don't want to put one in each corner because that will make it look like it was planned. Here looks like it needs something. Maybe if I do off the edge here, I'll have two. And I've just messed up my work surface again. And actually I might use the other two over here. Mine shot, hopefully I'm in shot. And I think I just want to put two in there. There you go. I think, I think that worked for me, maybe. Says he just continuing to do it. I think that was kind of where I was going with this. I think that just helps me with a little bit of a resting place for the eyes. Now, I normally just come in and I give this white with my damp cloth. As I said, a lot of my rubber stamps I use for paint um, and they're kept in one place, whereas rubber stamps I use for stamp stamping are kept in another place. Let's move that out of the way. Now let's take this one, which is um, one of the clean offs, and let's just put some white on there just to break it up and to clean off my um, whatever this thing is called 5x7 thank you I don't know who shouted that up I heard you All right there you go that's just making this a little more interesting because it was a clean off obviously from a black um, print I um, can't remember which print it was that I cleaned off with it but I didn't need it to be black if I needed black card I've got black card right so that can go into an interesting background Right, so we're back to the butterfly dilemma now. Now, I actually am looking at this thinking I should really risk it and use magenta. I don't want to say risk, that's the wrong word. I feel magenta would be the correct thing to do on here. So I'm just going to pull magenta out. and We're on the final steps here, guys. And then how long this video has been. Normally, the color combination experiment videos are not that long. Right, I'm going to come in. I want to use the Monarch Butterfly, definitely. Pick it up. You can always see whether there's enough paint on it. I'm going to come in. I'm going to literally drop that onto the white. But I don't want to get tied into only putting it on the white ones. So I think I'm going to stick with my rule of three of one, three of one and three of the other. I want that one vertically in my shot. Ooh, barely. Right, so that's enough of that. Again, as I said, I'll put paint side down on there. I think I need a little bit more magenta for the other butterfly. I want, I want to think about the angles of this. I'm not overly keen on having things flying out of my images, so I tend to have them flying in. Now, I'm only putting a bit of even pressure on the back. Um, sorry, I've stopped talking because my brain has to think about what I'm doing here. Um, that feels like the wrong place to put that butterfly. feel like I don't want to overkill the butterflies, but I feel I just need a bit more something. Okay, that one is going to be flying. Well, it's flying up. It's not flying out. I don't mind it off the page. Yeah, that's how I get marks on my, my surfaces. Uh, now, do I think that's done? I think that might be done. 
Right, I'll just clear this plate a bit. Just to give myself a few seconds thinking time, to be honest with you. Just so I can go, right, is it really finished? I'm going to pick up some of the magenta onto here because I haven't put any butterflies on the inside or on this piece if it's going to be used on the inside and maybe that's that's okay but it does need a bit of the color from the outside to the inside so as an example sorry that sun is coming across as you can see though that could be the inside to a journal cover if that was the outside of a journal cover so I think let's move that out of the way just so I can get a proper look at this okay so I'm tipping it up to me because obviously I'm trying to work through through the iPad. I think we're going to call that done. Deep down I'd quite like some curly Q things in there but I think we're going to stop because I really do think enough is enough. Yeah let's call that let's call that done guys or else I'll fiddle on and it'll end up being messy. I think there's a lot on there and I think we're okay with that. So um, that just leaves me to say goodbye. So I'm Kerry the Crafter that's C-E-R-I the Crafter and I will see you for the next one. Bye-bye guys.